Are you ready for some Dungeon Bowl? Because I am, and today we're painting up a dwarf from the new starter set. That's right, today I wanted to work on something from the new Dungeon Bowl starter set because I'm constantly talking about those Blood Bowl minis and how cool they are, so why not paint one? And one of my goals for 2022 is to work on Flesh Tones and that dwarf has a great big old belly exposed, which is partially why I went with this outfit because it's also my most sporty outfit that I have. And it also has a belly exposed. Now, I wanna work on these Flesh Tones. We're gonna go with something tanned here, but this guy also has a really cool, very majestic beard and hair is always fun to play with with paint. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get painting our dwarf friend. As you can see, I've primed the model up using Wraithbone and I've kept him in two pieces to make the painting process a bit easier, especially when it comes to that majestic beard and all of that exposed flesh, which is what we're going to work on first. Now, I'm wanting to work with a more tanned flesh tone on this model, and I think I have found the perfect base coat for that. It's called Topaz Skin, and it comes in the Army Painter Skin Tone box set that recently released, and I'm really loving that box set. There's a lot of great, great flesh tones in there, and this is one of them. It has this very subtle orange pinky hue that I think is going to be perfect. Once all of that is on the model, we're gonna go ahead and move on to an overall wash using a contrast paint, specifically Fire Slayer's Flesh. This has a nice red-brown color tone that I think is gonna complement with the topaz skin really, really nicely. Once the contrast paint has had plenty of time to dry and it's done its work, made everything nice in a dark brownish red, we're gonna go back in with a slight highlight going over it with topaz skin one more time, just dry brushing this onto the most raised edges of the flesh, specifically focusing on that belly, on his knuckles and those exposed toes, just cause there's a lot of great detail there and I really wanna pop it out and make it look cool. With a lovely tan skin tone achieved, I think it's time to move on to that glorious beard and his majestic mohawk because I want to make them look like fire. And to do that, I'm gonna start with a base coat of Blood Angels Red. Now I did debate doing Griffhound Orange here because I ultimately want the beard to have more oranges in it than reds, but I thought this would be a deeper shadow color that would work a little bit better, so Blood Angels it is. Once that color has had plenty of time to dry, we're going to move on to some highlights with some dry brushing. And the first of those colors that we're gonna work with is Wild Rider Red. This is more of a transitional color as we move into some brighter oranges, but it's very important step to help us get a really nice smooth blend. So do this a little bit heavier and start with it. Then we're going to move on to another highlight using Fire Orange from the Master Series Paint Collection by Reaper. I, this is just a really nice, just neutral orange, and I really love the robust color that comes out of it. So we're gonna go ahead and dry brush this on next, not going quite as heavy as the Wild Rider, but still pretty heavy. Then finally, we're gonna move on to a little bit of a yellow tone, but not too bright of a yellow. I didn't wanna go full aerial yellow with this, but instead we're gonna go with Marigold Yellow. This is another Master Series paint color that is almost, I mean, it's really kind of an orange, more so than a yellow, but it just has this slight glow that makes his beard really look like embers. And I love the effect it has. It's looking amazing on his hair. It's that time of the video where I interrupt to tell you about my Patreon and to let you know that we just added a Discord server, which all tiers get access to. So if you're wanting a way to chat with me, share with me your projects, or just tell me what board games you're playing, definitely make sure to check the link below and check out my Patreon. Now we're painting a dwarf and I think a dwarf's armor and uniform for Blood Bowl and Dungeon Bowl should definitely be made of primarily metal. So we're going to be working with a lot of metallics next. But before we get to that, I do want to base coat everything that is going to be metallic using a bit of Black Templar, just so that the paint goes on a little smoother. I just find I get a better consistency if I do this. So it's something that I always try to do. Now, once the Black Templar is down, we're gonna start working with all those metallic paints. And the first of those colors is gonna be a little bit of Lead Belchers. Now. This is my opportunity to add in a little bit of a more cooler or neutral color tone to my overall warm color palette that I've been working with thus far. And I think it works perfectly to tone things down just a smidge and add a little bit of contrast to the overall mix. This is primarily gonna go on his helmet as well as his bracers, but also be used for some of the hooks and decals holding the armor actually onto him. Then once we're done with that, we're gonna actually move on to a slightly brighter silver with Stormhost Silver. This is going to only be used on the gems that are adorning his beard. This is going to be an important step for technical paint we use later, and we'll talk about that more in a bit. 
Greedy Gold is the final metallic color tone I'll be using on my dwarf, and this is going to be basically covering anything else that we haven't already painted. That shoulder piece, it's going to go on all the decorative bits that are actually on his armor, all those lovely dwarven faces, and any of the decorum in his beard. I really like the way that this ends up working out. I also really heavily associate gold with dwarves, and I want this team's color tone to be gold and red, and so I think this is a perfect opportunity to use this color and mix it into the uniform a bit more. Speaking of that gold and red color scheme, let's go ahead and play with a bit more red, shall we? We're going to pull back out Blood Angel's red and apply this to his trousers and any of the leather straps or cords keeping his armor on. Then we're going to move on to a little bit of Black Templar for the stitching that's holding his trousers on, as well as his belt, just for a little bit of contrast to make them look like they're a little bit different. Then the last color that we need to put on him is a bit of Skeleton Horde thinned down with a bit of contrast medium so that we can get this nice pale glaze for those skulls on his beard. So I may have forgot to record green screen footage for the Reichland flesh shade that I'm applying to the entire model with the exception of his actual flesh a little bit ironically. All right the next thing that we're going to do is um can we talk about those shoes? Are those are those regulation for whatever sport it is? You know what? Is, you know what? is this the dungeon bowl uniform? It is, in fact. Have you not looked at the witch elves? Like, I'm sure they have the majestic heels. Also, I realized when we were filming and doing this bit that I don't own sneakers. So I'll probably need to correct that at some point. But the height is better for filming so that's what we're doing now we're outside because this guy is basically ready to be pushed together but i'm worried that i might accidentally rub off some of the paint as i'm pressing them together because of the oils on my hands so i'm going to go ahead and varnish him using a satin varnish and get those pieces sealed up and then after that's dried a little bit i'll be able to safely push them together let's get to it I almost forgot about the all important gems that we painted in Stormhost Silver. Well, we're gonna come back to them now real quick after we've pushed him together and go ahead and glaze them using a little bit of Spirit Stone Red, which is a gem paint from Citadel that really dries looking like a gem. I absolutely love the way this looks, but it works best if you have a pale metallic tone, typically a silver beneath it. So that's why we did that step earlier. I'm really pleased with how he looks now that he's fully together. But we have one thing left to take care of, and that is this gentleman's base. Now I have a plan for that, and it's going to be that I'm going to do something similar to what I did on my Necromantic Horror team back in, I think, 2020 or 2021. I don't remember when I painted them now, but I want to mimic what I did on their bases. So I'm going to start with a little bit of sterling mud because we did sort of a blighted earth look for them and this is going to be my foundation. Once this has dried thoroughly, we're going to move on to a dry brush, a light one, using Taloran sand. I just like the complement of these two colors really well and it'll add a little bit of highlight. Then the final thing that I'm going to do is add some gamer grass tufts to this guy because I really, one, I love those grasses. If you've watched a lot of my other videos, I use them all the time. Plus, there's this like random sculpted grass piece on this base, and that is my least favorite type of sculpting that Games Workshop does. So I'm just gonna cover it and pretend like it's not there. But otherwise, I'm super pleased with this, so I'm gonna get him finished up so we can look at the final model. And here he is, my majestic dwarf warrior who's ready to compete in Dungeon Bowl. I'm so happy with how this guy came out. It was, I had a plan of getting tanned flesh and then having a very, very red orange dwarf. And that's what I got. And it honestly, it was a lot of fun to paint up. I can't wait to build the rest of the team and actually get working on them as well. Overall, this paint scheme, while relatively simple and relatively limited, 
turned out fantastic. And that's one of the things that I really like about this hobby is there's- I love his beard. I know, it's just so good. It looks like fire. But there's so many cool things that you can do with a bunch of different techniques and you can combine a bunch of different tools and have them all working together to create something really, really cool. So just always keep that in mind whenever you're trying out new things and exploring the hobby a bit more. Now, I have a little bit of news before we go on. I want to let everybody know that the news our hobby news is going to be moving to Mondays. We are going to be pushing it back one day just to give us a little bit of flexibility to find more things to talk about, as well as just get a little bit more filming and Games editing done. Games Workshop keeps announcing things Exactly, on it's really rude of them. So we've decided to go ahead and move the news to Monday. So that is going to happen this coming week. Expect a news video on Monday. Now, before I head out, I do want to say a huge thank you to my patrons for allowing content like this to be made. Without you guys, we wouldn't be here. So thank you very, very much. I have been Angela. You have been watching Hobby Night, and I will see you guys on Monday for a brand new news video, as well as on Wednesday for our, another episode and our Let's Play. I can't wait. It's very exciting. The channel is just growing. I love it. Bye.